Welcome, welcome everyone to the new edition of the Miles High Pod. This is Miles Monroe Jr., your host, and I want to thank you for joining me today. As you know, the goal and vision for this pod, as always, is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist, always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right? And I'm going to re- keep repeating uh, this, this quote, and it's, it's become a mantra for this platform, right? And it's something that I, I, I'm repetitive about because I'm serious about uh, trying to uh, create a culture with this platform and with everything that I do of continuing to better ourselves, continuing to elevate beyond our fears, elevate beyond our doubts, um, because our fears and our doubts uh, will only limit us from achieving the goals and the purpose that we have for this life. So I want to make sure that we're consistently bettering ourselves and developing ourselves on a daily basis. And that's why I continue to repeat that mantra, okay? And hopefully at some point as you listen uh, to me during this part, you'll be able to repeat that with me, all right? So we got a special, a very special part today. Uh, I know I've been promising this for quite some time. Uh, but the day is finally here. Uh, we have our second <laughs> guest on the pod, and I am excited because I have finally gotten my wife on the pod. <laughs> Begrudgingly, I'm here. I've had to bribe her with food, guys. <laughs> yes, it, it has been a, it has been a task, but but food is the way to a heart. I, that's the truth. <laughs> so I, I I've been cooking uh, many of meals. <laughs> For, for this day to, to finally be here. But my wife is here joining me on the pod today. Um, and I wanted to use this pod just to talk about uh, relationships in general, but more specifically our relationship and how uh, we have developed to this point and how we can uh, want to continue to develop our relationships and kind of give you some insights on that. So want to first, first of all, welcome, baby. Thank you for having me. I'm <laughs> always here. I'm just on the <laughs> yeah, other well, side. Well, yeah, she's finally... Um, actually on the couch yes so she's sitting here with me for those of you listening uh so you're gonna hear her voice a lot more often a lot more clearer on this episode and for those of you watching on all the video platforms you're actually getting to see her sit on the couch now Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in whichever platform you're using so i want uh babe i want you to let's go ahead and introduce yourself give a brief introduction of yourself so like let's Let's say, like, you know, you're, where were you born? Let's give a little bit of, about your family history, uh, a little bit about your education, your professional uh, professional life, uh, stuff like that. Let's, let's okay. give people some insight to you. So, again, my name is Sharice. Uh, I was born and raised in the Bahamas, Nassau, but I also have Jamaican roots. I am the fourth of five children, um, so I'm the youngest girl. Um, I studied in the Bahamas, of course, at Catholic High School, Aquinas College, go Aces. <laughs> and then after that, I ventured over to the College of the Bahamas, which is now the University of the Bahamas, and I studied journalism and mass communications. And then from there, I transferred to New York City, one of my favorite places in the world, one of our favorite places Absolutely. in the world. Absolutely, that's the hometown, by the and way. And there, <laughs> I went to the City University of New York, Brooklyn College, Brooklyn. campus, BK, and That's I studied from, television and radio production. So I've always wanted to be in the journalism, writing, production, media field. And I, I continue to do that. Um, but what was so special about the time that I went off to New York was that was the beginning of the blogging and social media era. So I think I was really positioned to be where I am at that time now because I was able to learn early on the benefits of social media and I started my blog she's major.com and it was one of the one of the first blogs of its kind coming out of the bahamas Mm -hmm. as a bahamian and i think we did really good things it started off as a way for me actually to keep in touch with family and friends to let them know what i was doing in new york and while i was there i had the opportunity to do things that people back home found interesting and so from there i was i think the first entertainment news that i kind of um reported was I was actually on the video set of a 50 cent video now that I remember and I blogged that and then from there the blog took on a mind of its own in entertainment and gossip and we 
we had a team of people that just reported everything from news, entertainment, and I, I want to say we did a great job because we were everywhere. And that started my journey of writing and blogging and social media. Mm-hmm. And from there, it just took off into a life of its own and helped me get so many opportunities. And then I know, so I know this, but your, your blog or your blogging evolved from that point. Yes. And, and you know, for context, you were doing that while you were in college. I was. Um, as a hobby. Yeah, it uh, was a hobby. Initially. Led to many opportunities, uh-huh. but also led me to my first big job during doing um, tourism, marketing, social media. So, you know, from there, it kind of transitioned into more of traveling because I did a lot of traveling. And a lot of people back then, I, I want to say before the, in- the Instagram traveling phase began I started to document a lot of my travels because people were really interested in it and I did well, more, mm-hmm. more so you wanted to show people yeah. how easy it was yes I travel. wanted because there was a stigma mm-hmm. of traveling that you know traveling was super expensive yes. and on, especially traveling like across the Atlantic like yeah. to Europe and those countries right yeah definitely and I think people were also very afraid of solo travel mm-hmm. so my first solo travel trip was to Europe I went to London and Paris went to the Olympics and I did it by myself and a lot of people were a very were very afraid to travel alone they thought it was so expensive and as Bahamians we you know I don't want to say this yes. but <laughs> you know sometimes we just stop at Miami and I wanted to show people that you can go further it's not expensive it's probably the same amount as traveling to Florida mm-hmm. and I really wanted to showcase that and I was able to showcase a lot of the the trips the trip hacks that I have in terms of getting low cost plane tickets, mm-hmm. budgeting, transportation, you know, transportation, hotels, and all of the, yeah. the things that you should know when you're traveling. So mm-hmm. I think that did a really, that was really popular because back then a lot of people weren't doing it. So, you know, even though I was happy documenting my travels, I did get burnt out and I didn't enjoy my travels as much because I, it became more, of, instead of being a hobby, it came, became a job for me. And so I kind of, you know, put that on the back burner a little bit. I still do it, but during, you know, the Instagram phase, it got, you know, a lot of people started to do it. So I, I didn't really find that there was a need for me to continue doing it as much mm-hmm. as I was. I'm guessing that was because like you wasn't able to enjoy yeah. your trips more because mm-hmm. you was more focused on like taking the shots and the videos that you needed to take yeah. as opposed to actually enjoying where you were. Exactly. And, I, and if you know me, you know, when I commit to doing something, I commit to do it fully. So if I say that I'm going to document a trip to Greece or something, I am going to be fully immersed in getting as much content as I can, showcasing it, video, writing. And for me, I just, the balance for me wasn't there. And so I just wanted to really get back into enjoying my travels a little more. Mm-hmm. And so, so you, of course, yeah, yeah I so you took, took a little break. Or took, I did. For, I guess you segued from travel blog and now you're a, a new yeah. content blogger, right? <laughs> yes. Let's talk about your new content that you do. Well, I don't know if it was new, more so that I spent, I just get, got more interested in my hair mm-hmm. because so many people keep asking me, what products do you use? How do you do this? My kids, I need help. And I really kind of just took that on and said, you know what, this isn't too much work for me. It's not going to interfere in what I love doing, traveling. I can do this on the side. And so I really dived into fully teaching people or giving them tips and tricks on how to take care of their naturally curly hair. And I feel like I have gotten so much joy from doing that because I remember me being a teen or being, you know, back then we didn't have as many resources for natural hair. Mm -hmm. It is now not, you know, as difficult, but I still find that there are a lot of young girls who find it very difficult to take care of their hair. And it's not easy, to be honest. I know you see how long it takes me to fix my hair Mm -hmm. and I only do a wash and go. And so I get a lot of parents hitting me up saying, you know, thank you so much for assisting us and my daughter now wears her hair out, you know. Yeah, that's that's the wild part, right? Because we'd be out somewhere and uh, a mother would walk up and be like, hey, you're Sharice, uh, you're, she's so major, right? And she'd be like, yeah, and he'd be like, yeah, I just wanna, I wanna thank you. My my daughter watches your videos and yeah. she's so much more confident about wearing it. Yeah, and, and it's like crazy to me, right? Because I'm like, yeah, and I'm a male, right? So we don't have much care to do <laughs> with our hair, right? We just literally wet our hair, dry our hair, walk out the door, right? But 
it's just amazing how like young girls um I guess they don't want to want to take the time to because it, it's a lot it, it is, is a lot, lot of work the work that Sharice goes through uh but the confidence that you're instilling and sharing with with people I think I think is amazing especially when people come up to tell you about it yeah I think so and it's something that I love to do so I feel if I can help one person I am doing a good job sure sure well that's a little bit about you yeah, right just a, a little, little bit about, just the know, tip of the iceberg I think the more you actually get to sit on the couch, the, the more we'll, we'll dive into like different aspects of those transitions because there's a lot of, of stories behind um, a lot of her um, blogging transitions and some funny stories as well. <laughs> I think it would be good to share them uh, at some point. At some point. <laughs> uh, but, you know, our story. So, you know, Sharice and I have been friends from high school. So yes. I've known Sharice for a pretty long time. Uh, we have generally the same group of friends um for years i'm talking like this is 25 plus years of friendships uh that she and i have with the individuals like the majority of the people that were at our wedding well, who's were, in our were wedding like too? long time friends that from high school had. yeah and beyond yeah from like school from her school well, her friends my friends our friends together obviously family and stuff so it, it's it's um We've we have a, a history on we we've been friends for a, a pretty long time, right? We and it wasn't like anything, you know, uh, what's the word romantic yeah, or whatever. It was, it was like we were platonic friends. Yeah, we were like just straight friends. We yeah. uh, we we would message each other a lot. This was and obviously back in the day we was on MSN Messenger, right? So Facebook. we kind of dating ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> MSN Messenger don't even exist. I'm sure a lot of people don't even know what MSN Messenger is. Um, Does it exist? You don't know what MSN message is. <laughs> we have, uh, <laughs> we have a, a Gen Z person in the, in, in the crew. I'm sure he has no idea what, what uh, yeah. MSN message is. Um, you don't know the struggle of signing offline and back online just so someone can see <laughs> that you're online. <laughs> yeah, we, could, we have been friends a long time. That's the point, right? And um, we, just, we shared a lot of commonalities, right? Yes. Look, she spoke about her travel blog. Travel is something that I love. You, if you've been listening to this pod you know that i'm i love to travel and she loves to travel as well so that's some place some something that we we shared with each other right and she loves uh, uh fashion as well i think both of us are very fashion conscious we love music we love, love sports. sports uh we we love food we're foodies <laughs> <laughs> so we, we love to try well i love to try new things and i force her to try new things yes. and things and she uh she get she understands that oh well because I tell her all the time right like there's a lot of stuff that she eats now that she wouldn't have eaten definitely. before definitely I would have and definitely I not eaten oysters to remind her like you will only like <laughs> this now because of me yes absolutely so give me my props I give you your props okay give me your props I appreciate that um, but now we just had a lot of commonalities and eventually like that so you know we went through high school years college years and then adulthood right and just you know a couple of years ago um it just kind of evolved into a little more than friendship um one of us reached out to each other i'm not gonna say who just accounts may vary <laughs> but you know someone reached out someone <laughs> said you know how's it going <laughs> and it kind of turned into to something a little more than friendship and we started mm -hmm. dating uh and again we because we i think it was easy for us to build a relationship because we started with a friendship and i think that's Absolutely. and it's, it's not possible all the time but if you're able to start in a friendship i think it makes it easier right because you have already established a foundational relationship with that person so evolving into a relationship uh probably wouldn't be that difficult no and i think it's easier when you are friends with someone because you you kind of skip certain steps, in my opinion, mm -hmm. even though you still have to get to know each other in a relationship because mm -hmm. being in a friendship is different. Um, so getting in a relationship with someone, even though you're friends, you still have to to learn how your friendship coexists in that relationship. But mm -hmm. I think it's definitely better to be in a relationship in a relationship with someone who you are truly friends with. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, so we got into a relationship. We started dating, uh, came, became serious, and decided to uh become a little more serious about each other and, and jump how into many years it. have we been together Let me put you on the spot so again accounts may vary because <laughs> you have a different starting point than i do as but, most women do yes usually 
but between six and seven years, I think, right? Five no, and six. No, no, no. What is it? No. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Okay, guys, just, we'll 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 figure it out off we'll camera. We'll make those we'll, calculations and we'll come. We'll bring it back in part two for, to, for confirmation. But we started to date and um, became like you know super serious about getting to know each other on a on a more intimate level. Um, you know, Sharice's background. Her uh, spiritual background is set in the Anglican faith, yes. and I'm, I am non-denominational, kingdom-based. So, you know, that alone was enough conversation for her and I to have. Um, and I think, well, I think I'm a pretty. I've always been a pretty open person. Mm-hmm. So, even though I had a strong Anglican faith, I was always open to your faith and mm-hmm. what that is, and learning, and not being, you know. Kind of like, oh, I don't want to learn. Well, I don't know what that is. Yeah, and I think that that allowed us to develop our relationship, right? Because one of the things that I I decided to uh, ask Sharice to do is before before we even got engaged, um, we took a pre-marital class, right? And I know that's not traditionally how it's done. Like usually, uh, folks would get engaged and then before the wedding, uh, you go to a pre-marital class, which was new to me because I'm like. Why are you asking me to go to premarital counseling and you ain't even give me no (laughs) ring yet? Like, what's that about? So I was very annoyed about it. Um, But I was like, you know, it's something new, I guess. I guess that's what they do at their church. uh, Yeah. And it's it's I've been I've been learning, you know, so much about relationships and men and women, you know, obviously for the majority of my life, especially my adult life. And I just felt like that class, a particular class would benefit us so much because like I think I had a good idea of your temperament and the type of person that you were and like we love both of us are learners right we we enjoy learning enjoy continuing to learn um and evolve as individuals so I knew that uh going to this class would would benefit if, if, even if it didn't benefit our relationship mm-hmm. it would benefit us as individuals oh, absolutely. and I wanted to do it before uh you know, we even thought about, well, I even thought about getting engaged because I just thought like it was a good step. And it was a, it was an important step to uh, really focus ourselves on, you know, getting serious about taking that next step. Because I didn't want it to be where we like, decided to, to get engaged and then maybe went through the yeah. class and s- discovered some differences, differences yeah. that we had and it just, you know, yeah. wouldn't work out. Right. So. You know, I, I maybe it's, it doesn't work for everyone, but you know, I would say even before you get engaged, do some marital classes, like some yeah. pre marital classes. I think it'll it'll benefit you uh, in the long run. And I'm not saying to do it with like every girlfriend you have to my guys or to the ladies, do it with every boyfriend that you have. But that one that you have an idea that you know this is this could be the one, right? This is one. This is something that I want to kind of take seriously. I think exploring. Uh, taking the premarital class even before the engagement uh, is a good decision to make. I agree, and I think it's very unconventional because, of course, people get engaged and then they do the counseling, which is, it might have been, in my opinion now, a little backward because marital counseling asks those hard questions that mm-hmm. some people don't want to answer while in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And I think <laughs> going through that class and, you know, just witnessing what we witnessed it was like okay i think we made the right decision because it was you know a absolutely rough. I, you know we learned a lot right? yeah because I, I, we learned a lot about each other's uh love language mm-hmm. for for instance like what i thought was sharice's love language was in her love language right and i yeah. learned i got to really understand and learn what her love language actually was going through that class and the same for yeah, her and i think for you i i don't even know if i really thought was about it thinking about yeah. love languages at the time so i think i knew about it but i didn't really think to apply it to our relationship but at it, that time but it explained a yeah. lot right especially like with the the differences that we had or the let's call them disagreements yeah. that we may have mm-hmm. at times right it kind of explained why those would happen because we we started to understand like how each other relates mm-hmm. um on an individual level so we brought that into our relationship and just Getting a better understanding, her of me and me of her, um, from the from a loving, like how to love her aspect, it really it really helped me. Um, 
we also learned we, we there was a budgeting so this this marriage class it was like a like 12 weeks like a 12 week 16 week class something like that you met That's you met cool. once a week um mm -hmm. it was a pretty long class long. but Sharice is a very like i say she loves to learn right and she's a very traditional learner so and she's like super old school right so i knew you that old? I, <laughs> no, you're just old school <laughs> she was raised by old people um so she is she is um a, a very she's traditional at heart so i knew that eventually in this class like she would start to love it just because of the information that was going to be shared and like sure enough like we got through the class and we actually both were looking forward to the class each week we were. Um, and it was like i think it was maybe one or two hours or maybe three hours it wasn't more than three hours uh a week uh for a day and mm -hmm. we learned so much right we learned about budgeting we talked about uh we talked about what else we talked about um oh i i learned well i i knew so my dad always did this this teaching on men and women and, and how they how they understand understand right so men are logical creatures women are emotional creatures and you know i'm i'm the type of person like i'm a man of my word right logical right if i tell you i'm going to do something tell you i'm going to be somewhere or whatever i'm going to be there like you can guarantee it i i want to say it's a very good attribute but it can also become very annoying because if charo tells you something or you tell him something and you don't do it it's like give me a break right so so that and that actually be, became an issue for us like early on right because i would you know we would have a a, a conversation like i would tell sheree something and she would agree right we'd be like yeah okay cool five minutes later it'll be like we never had that conversation and she'd be like uh yeah i just changed my mind right and i'd be like change your mind like we already had a conversation like why are you changing your mind and i i always knew that women were emotional creatures but it, it took me it took reminding me through this marriage class right and understanding that you know because they it was ver it was said verbatim and i've heard this a lot too because my dad did, did a lot of teachings on marriage and relationships and stuff but like if a woman makes a decision in today in this hour five minutes from now that can be a totally different the deci de different decision because the, si the decision that she is making is based on how she feels at that particular moment now this may not apply to all women like i don't want to generalize anything but for the most part, right? Uh, this is how like most women uh, communicate and how they operate, right? And Sharice was was like that. Like she would feel a certain type of way, make a certain type of decision in one breath, and then the very next breath is an entirely other decision. And you need nothing wrong with changing your mind. Yeah, but I, it took um, it took me learning that, yes. right? Because that, like I say, I am so I'm a I'm a stickler for keeping your word. And if you tell me you're going to do something or tell me you're mm -hmm. gonna, you know whatever it is that we agree on like my expectation is you're going to do it and or keep to it because i'm gonna you know come with that same energy i agree but i also think it has more to do with you are a very disciplined person mm. and when you make a decision <laughs> it's that's the decision I'm, I'm i'm totally opposite i'm very creative and sometimes you know i'm all over the place yeah and absolutely. so it's like eh, i don't i don't think i want to do what i told you and it can become an argument a stern conversation so mm -hmm. i think it's all about learning your partner like you saying basically knowing that she probably made that decision because she was in an emotional state sure. but i'm not going to hold her to it so i eventually got to that right i started to learn like even like now like when she when we say things that, like she would like make a decision or make a statement i'd be like yeah but you you feel differently in a couple of in a couple of minutes so I, I'm, I'm not going to hold you to that right i say it jokingly but it's just me saying like i understand um i understand like the type of person that you are and how you communicate and how to you know kind of uh gauge how committed she may be to a decision as opposed to like you know a, a day from now a week from now or other sorts and i think this this premarital class helped us out with that i agree and i think for us our communication has always been very good like mm -hmm. there's nothing we don't say there's no stone we don't leave unturned mm -hmm. and i think that has helped our our relationship since day one and i think that is one of the most important things in a relationship is communication. Yeah, and then also I think one of the most I, I, a, a, a good principle we learned in the class they they spoke about submission yeah. right and 
you know, there's this there's this verse in the Bible. But there's, you know, there's this negative connotation to submission in today's relationships and marriages. And even you, you th- you once told me you said, I didn't think you were open to the idea of submitting. And I'm like, you know, you have to be worthy to have someone submit to you, in my opinion. Fair. Not that you weren't worthy, but I'm saying a lot of the arguments that come out in today's society, relationships, you know, Twitter, whatever, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm not submitting, but it's like, are you a person worthy of my submission? And I think because, so you're you're a very uh, strong-willed I'm person. I'm a strong, independent black woman that don't need a man for nothing. Okay, let me, let me say something. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Gentlemen, look at me, please. <laughs> listen, listen to my voice. <laughs> These women that say that they are strong and independent and don't need a mind for anything, that is a bold faced lie. All right? Not a lie. It's an emotional statement that they're feeling at the time. And I'm sure that there's truth to it, but there's like it it's a it's a it's a two way street, right? And I understand that maybe the type of they're talking, maybe they don't need a particular type of mind, right? They want a mind that's purposed, that's focused, that's disciplined, like those are trait character traits that you know they women most women would probably submit to and i think society has has uh, tainted the relationship right and and between uh male and female and how women should submit to men and how men should love women right because that's what the, that's what the bible tells us to well, do. stick a pin in it the bible all all also said that you're supposed to submit to each other so it's not just women no, submitting. So I'm, I'm gonna get there you just know. i'm just setting it up okay. yes <laughs> so it you know whenever whenever uh people discuss uh like men or uh, women submitting to men right like they so that that's that verse, that's actually from the bible and people like kill this verse right ephesians 5 verse 22 it says wives wives submit to yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the lord and then for the husband, for the husband is the head of the of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the savior, right? So essentially it's focusing on women just submitting themselves to, to the wife, right? There's a verse literally right before that, right? So that's that, that was they conveniently leave out. Yeah, that's so that was Ephesians 5, 22, right? But verse 21 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So the first statement that was made was both the husband and the wife submit to each other in reverence for the foundation or which should be the foundation of the relationship, right? Which is, which is Christ. And uh, a lot of people don't pay attention to that, right? And I understand that, yes, wives are, are, should submit themselves to their husbands, but that doesn't mean to be a slave to your husbands, right? It just means to submit to... Uh, their leadership, their mm-hmm. vision, uh, their purpose for the family, right? And that comes, like I say, with a with a focused, with, with a mind that's focused, with a mind that's purpose driven, with a mind that that has a vision for the wife and his family and what he's trying to build with her, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then it goes on to say, now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit their husbands in everything. And in verse twenty five, it says, "Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ loved the, the church." church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without strain or or wrinkle, without without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. And in this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. And that's another thing that they leave out, right? So it says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. And then further on down, it says, husbands, love your wife as you love yourself. Right. And I think sometimes we as men forget that that just as I love and take care of myself and we're conscious of it, uh, we're supposed to be have that same consciousness when we're when we're loving our wives. Agreed. And I think that if you understand the entire verse in its totality, I don't think the submission should be an issue. I mean, that's just me, though. I can't speak for every bars. (laughs) You can't speak for all women. No, and I mean, like I say, I think it, it's it's uh, it's it's based. It's not just like, you know, this like a, a mind that you know, isn't focused, isn't purpose filled, isn't disciplined. A, a a wife or a woman should automatically submit to him. Like you okay. have to bring uh, structure to the to, to the to that unity, right? And 
provide a, a level of comfort, a level of protection, a level of safety for your wife to make it easy for the submission to happen. Agreed, because I don't think any woman wants to lead a family. Mm -hmm. You know, no one wants to lead. No one wants to do all of these things. And then you're saying you're supposed to submit to me. I mean, that just don't make no sense to me. <laughs> so if, if you have an opportunity, I want to encourage you to read Ephesians 5, um, 20, read the enti this entire passage from 21 to 31, right? That, that's a, I think it's a great foundational message for relationship, especially if you're thinking about uh, jumping into marriages. Um, and so with, with this premarital seminar, I think this also taught us that we, like Sharice and I have made a decision to always invest in our, in, invest into our relationship. Yeah. You know, so we, we talk all the time. Um, we, we read books and discuss them together. We watch teachings together and discuss the teachings. Like we're always communicating to build both of ourselves up. So we, we build ourselves up uh, individually and then we build, build ourselves up within our relationship. Um, because I think that's something that is, uh, it's, it's important, right? Because you don't wanna just, you know, kind of get into a relationship, decide to marry this person, get married, and then everything stops, right? The, yeah. the growth and development doesn't stop. The learning doesn't stop. You know, uh, my, my dad says that, well, the Bible says, and my dad did a great teaching on this, that uh, in all you're getting, get understanding, right? And for every aspect of life, especially in relationships, right? Love doesn't keep a relationship together. Commitment doesn't keep a relationship together. Understanding keeps relationship together. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So gaining knowledge, and that's, that's something that both of us are committed to. Uh, like we attend uh, seminars. seminars. We, we continue to build our relationship. We travel together. We make time for ourselves. We, we want to continue to build our relationship um, because it's important. And, and it's, it's something that she, both of she and I are intentional about right like she talks she asks me all the time like you know when these kids come along like are we still going to have date night are we well, still yeah because i want to say you know we could sit here we're newlyweds mm -hmm. and people can say oh y'all yeah. ain't gone through nothing yeah, yet yeah, yeah. you know but we are ensuring that by the time certain things hit us we are totally prepared for it which is why we read this is why we invest in going to marriage uh classes or seminars because the CDs, yeah, we, we, we want to be prepared DVDs. for these things we actually attended a, a, a marriage seminar uh, recently mm -hmm. you know and like i say it's something that we we did and we actually enjoyed it right because like i say sharice is a learner and i love to learn so any information that we're able to get um that helps us as individuals and then also allows us to help our relationship uh i think it's 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 great for us to do and it's important yeah. for us to do and, and we actually enjoy doing it and in this particular sem seminar, like we discussed uh, communication, right? And how important communication is. And it talked about uh, the five, five levels, levels of, of communication. Of communication. Um, I think Have for level now. one, it's uh, the casual, casual conversation. conversation. Uh, level two was the reporting of facts. Uh, one uh, second. Level I... three was so expressing ideas. Yeah, it's casual conversation, reporting the facts, expressing ideas, opinions, decisions with specific intent to be heard and understood, sharing emotions, and the fifth level of communication would be complete, complete. emotional and personal communication mm -hmm. with absolute openness and honesty. Right, and so we sh so leaving that seminar, like we internalize those levels of communication. So like Sharice would poke fun at me like in certain conversations that I have. Like if he like, says something to me, I'm like, oh, you're at a what level yeah, you're one? Operating like, at a you're level not one communicating right now, so at like, five. <laughs> you know, so it's just like we try to keep it fresh, try to keep it uh, engaging for both of us, right? Uh, this learning process, it's never ending. Uh, Sharice is, you know, the the person that she is today isn't going to be the person that she is uh, 365 days from now, and. As she evolves, I want to evolve myself individually, and I want our relationship to continue to evolve as well. So I want to encourage you, if you're in a relationship, thinking about uh, getting serious and jumping into a marriage, uh, premarital classes are, are awesome. You can try to find one at your local church or, or your local inside in your local community. I with think, a therapist. Or with a therapist, yeah. Uh, a spiritual, a spiritual uh, father. 
for either of you, you know, and just make sure it's like mutually something both of you want to do. Like I, one thing I never wanted to do was force Sharice to do anything. So yeah, I wanted to make sure. I'm not that, the type to be forced either. Yeah, I wanted to make sure that she was on board just as much as I was on board because I knew that eventually, uh, on the long run, it, it, it'll be beneficial to uh, to the both of us. Um, and, you know, and any any recommendations for folks in a relationship because I know like like I said you started in a, or you came up under a Anglican with an Anglican mm -hmm. background and I'm non-denominational and kingdom based and I think I mentioned this before uh, that you know even the the way that we speak and the way like my faith is much different than my wife and that has everything to do with the way that I was brought up right but I know but my faith wasn't wasn't always like this right I had to get to this level and it took me learning from those that were around me, the strongest influence being my dad um, and just seeing how strong his faith was and understanding how we're not supposed to be warriors, right? We're just supposed to be focusing and, and seeking uh, the kingdom of God. So I knew that, I, I know that um, Sharice is going to be able to build her faith um, because uh, we're going to be doing it together, right? And I'm going to be uh, pushing her to to test her faith and to step out outside of her comfort zone, but you know, with that being sa said, right, and the differences in our spiritual upbringing, mm -hmm. like how what what's it like something that you would recommend to like couples that you know may have similar backgrounds like you and I, and they're trying to come together with and make decisions, you know, in a union, mm -hmm. but just being from from different spiritual backgrounds. Well, I think the most important part is you have to be open to mm -hmm. wanting to learn something different. And it can't be, well, I'm right, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. It has to be constant communication. And it has to be a willingness to learn something new. Because for me, um, I'll be honest, I was never a kingdom person. I, I, I lived here all my life, but I, never, I couldn't tell you what happened inside of BFM. I really couldn't. Mm -hmm. Because I was an Anglican mm -hmm. and we're very, you know, one, two, three. This is how it goes. We genuflect. We take our communion. Genuflect. We go home. Right. And, you know, so many of the things that you guys do was very strange to me. Like, very strange. Mm -hmm. um, but I was always willing to learn more. My hunger for knowledge was always there. And so I would ask you these things. I wouldn't judge. I would just look and decide and study. And then, you know, oh, it's not so bad, I understand. And you just continue to learn and, and build on that. And if you really want to understand what someone is going through, you'd be, you'd, you know, you'd be fully open to, to, to their, their faith and, yeah. you know, their beliefs. And, and like I said, like, you know, she and I, like, listen to my dad all the time. We read, like, so a, a good example would be, like, the, the premarital class that we did, uh, it, it goes heavily, it, it's based heavily on a book that my, my dad wrote, and it's called The Purpose and Power of Love and Marriage. If you have an opportunity, if you haven't read that book before, I, I encourage you to get that book. It's available on our website, and I'm, I'm, not, and I'm not just saying this to, to get sales. Like, I truly believe like, it's an important book that mm -hmm. every person in a relationship should read, especially if you're thinking about getting into a marriage, because it just teach so much principles um, that have been able to help Sharice and I, and I'm sure it'll be able to help you. But it's available on our website, monarchglobal.com, and the name of the book is The Purpose and Power of Love and Marriage, and that was a very important book. And then those five levels of communications, like those were derived from a, a book called uh, The Marriage I Always Wanted like Gary by Chapman. Gary Chapman. That's a great book as well. And like I say, Sharice and I always, like we're continuously uh, trying to uh, gain knowledge, right? Because knowledge is what's going to allow us to to grow together and to, to be committed, continue to want to be committed to each other, right? The information that we receive um, and making wise decisions, being able to apply those uh, that knowledge and that understanding to our lives and to our relationship. Um, so I want to encourage you, if you're able to uh, pick up those two books in particular and then any any information you can get on, on relationships, on marriages, on understanding men and women, uh, understanding how to raise a family. Like all of these things are important when you're when you're getting into uh, well, getting serious about getting into a relationship and you're talking like marriages and, and kids and all that good stuff. Yeah. And I, I also want to 
make mention of that even though you're in a relationship, another good tip or marriage, another good tip is to maintain your individual individualism mm-hmm. because you don't want to solely become someone else. You want to ensure that you're still paying attention to your wants, your needs, learning for yourself so you can bring that to the relationship. I think that's very important so you don't lose yourself in a relationship. You still have your your things that you love to do. I still have the things that I love to do. We give each other space. that space that mm-hmm. we need to grow our relationship. Mm-hmm. And that's important too, right? Like I don't want to force Sharice. Like I never try to force her to, to like what I like or to, to, to be into the things that I'm into. And that even took a, a learning process for me, right? I, like I had to understand that I had to allow her her space and her individuality within this relationship because my dad actually gave a good point on like being what alone means right and being alone like alone doesn't mean like you're 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 an individual that's 50 percent full and you're waiting for someone else to come and like make you whole or fill you up right being alone is being all that you could be in one person right so like when adam was in the garden uh god didn't give adam or bring adam uh eve or create eve until he saw adam uh in his full fledged in his purpose like living in the garden working in the garden he gave him work to do mm-hmm. adam was working uh and then god said man it's not good for this man to be alone like it's not good for him to have all be all in one right be everything that he is and not have some someone there to assist him so being alone doesn't mean like you're you're lonely right being alone means like you're complete in the individual that you are you're and adding someone purpose. to that is adding another whole person to that union um and I think that that continues to build it. So that's that those like these are things that Sharice and I continuously talk about, continuously uh, remind ourselves about as we as we grow in our relationship. Uh, I just wanted to use this this time just to kind of talk about like you know how uh, how we have grown in our relationship, coming from like different spiritual backgrounds and different backgrounds. Period. Um, and you know I've seen her; she's grown uh so so much further from you know where she was when we first met and i have as well right mm-hmm. like she can tell you like the the growth that we both have experienced individually has has been one of the reasons why we've been able to to be so strong uh together in our union yeah and i think when couples they date i think they have to pay special attention to the spiritual life you know what does god mean to you do you pray together do you read together do you worship together do you have the same you know likes and differences like talk about these things because we have spirited spirited debates just because i am more so kingdom now doesn't mean that i still don't have those debates about being an anglican or what an anglican was or how they are so similar but also how they are so different Mm -hmm. so i think it's good to just really always communicate again Mm -hmm. it all comes back to communication that's and that's that's the most important thing communication and then information like getting mm-hmm. understanding and ensuring that you're continuing to learn your partner as you both grow individually uh ensuring that you're able to grow in the relationship as well mm-hmm. yep. oh, absolutely so babe thank you for being on this pod thank um, you for having me i'm ready for a hot meal <laughs> <laughs> i do over a meal now um but it was it, it was good being no, here this, this is something that i want to do again and i promise you we won't just talk relationships on this pod absolutely when you're, when you're on absolutely because yeah, we'll, we'll you know. dive into a lot a lot more other things because you know you i think you have a, a lot of, of of good uh experiences as well that you can share yeah um with absolutely. the audience mm-hmm. um so thank you for being on. You're uh, welcome. Any, I mean, any any last last words? Anything you um, want to share? Want to leave? My down? last words is I love my husband. <laughs> I love you too, my love. Um, no, I appreciate you. Thank you for being here. Seriously, thank, you. thank, thank you, you for. I think this is going to help. Uh, leave some some comments under um, wherever it is, whatever platform you're watching this particular episode. Okay, uh, I also want to say something. Okay. Um, Even though we might be giving advice to people, everyone's different. So what works for us may not work for another couple. So my advice to you is find what works for you. Because, you know, again, our recipe for success may not be someone else's recipe. So, you know, I just wanted to make sure, let everybody know 
what works for us may not work for someone disclaimer, else. Disclaimer, guys. Yeah, disclaimer. <laughs> disclaimer. And you know, it's just it's just us giving our experience our and our experience, advice, right? Yes. And I think the key principle that we want to teach is to in, to ensure that you're continuing to get information, right? And then you decipher through the information mm -hmm. like what works, what you want to try in your relationships and kind of decide like, you know, which path you want to take because everyone's path is different like oh, absolutely. Said, for sure. All right. Well, uh, this brings us to the segment of milestone for this particular part. This is a segment where I want to share <clears throat> a piece of information that you can take and apply to your daily lives. And, and today's milestone is, is like super simple, right? It comes from uh, the good book, uh, James 1 verses 19. And in a nutshell, I just want to leave you with these, with, with this phrase, be quick to listen, be slow to speak, be slow to anger. Be quick to listen, be slow to speak, and be slow to anger. I think that many relationships could be saved, <clears throat> could be reconciled, and could grow um, if people take heed to, to, to this advice, to these words, to this particular verse. Um, and I just want to leave that with you. You know, we've been discussing relationships with this pod. And even with Sharice's and I relationship, like I, I feel like my adherence to this verse in particular um, has really helped us, right? Because I could be a bit aggressive and, and boisterous at times, mm -hmm. but being quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger has really helped us. And I just wanted to ex extend <clears throat> that, those words of advice to you in hopes that it will help you as well. All right. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode for this particular part. I want to thank my wife, Sharice, for joining us. Uh, babe, how would you share your, for our listening audience, mm -hmm. let's share your, your um, social media uh, information just so that they can, you know, stay in touch with you, with your, with your blogging, or your vlogging. Uh, where, where can they find you on social media? You guys can find me on YouTube at Chiso Major, Facebook at Chiso Major, uh, TikTok, I'm on TikTok too, at Chiso Major, as well as Instagram at Chiso Major. And Across those, all channels. For those of you watching, we're going to put that on the screen just about right here in this area uh, for you guys to ensure that you stay in contact with or get in contact or keep in contact with Sharice and myself and everything that we're doing. Yes. All right. Well, as you know, the purpose and vision for this part is to entertain, educate, and elevate you miles high above your fears, your doubts, and any limitations that you may think exist. Always knowing that those limitations only exist in your mind. All right, until next time, you guys stay blessed.